Okay, so I am Ross. I did my PhD at the intersection of AI and neuroscience, and I'm the founder CEO of Limbic. And at Limbic, we build a regulated clinical AI to scale mental health care. 1.6 billion. That is the number of people living today worldwide with a diagnosable mental health condition. 2.8 million. That's the number, and an optimistic number I might add, of the licensed clinical mental health professionals worldwide. Clearly, something doesn't add up. Mental health care has a catastrophic workforce supply issue. And we cannot plug this supply demand imbalance through recruitment because the pipeline simply isn't there. At Limbic, we believe the only true path to scale in this sector is the creation of a new layer in this staffing pyramid a workforce of clinically validated AI therapy assistants to amplify existing clinician supply to help patients everywhere. So that's what we've built. It's a single specialist AI supporting both patients and clinicians across the care continuum. We start at the front door of care with intake and triage. That system then hands off to a generative AI care companion that supports patients before, during, and after treatment with cognitive behavioral therapy escalating where needed. And both these systems are connected in the background, providing decision support to the clinician. It's a cool idea, right? Wrong. It's not an idea. This is a practical reality today. In four years, Limbic has been adopted by 40% of NHS talking therapies services. We believe this makes us the largest deployment of patient-facing generative AI in a clinical context. So far, our AI assistant has directly supported 420,000 unique patients as part of routine treatment. And I'm very proud to say we meet the highest clinical standards. Limbic is the only mental health chatbot worldwide to have achieved class two medical device certification. This is software, but it is a medical device. We, of course, also have a number of uh, accreditations around data protection and information governance. I won't bore you with the details. What I will say is our ambition is global. We've done fantastically well in the United Kingdom, and now we are expanding into the US. In the last nine months, we have signed contracts with large provider organizations, which means that we are now directly supporting patients across 13 US states. And watch this space because we are currently in contracting with provider organizations that will give us a national footprint across all 50 states. But what makes us unique? What makes us an AI company rather than a company using AI? Well, the key thing to emphasize is this is not just another thin wrapper over ChatGPT. For the last five years, a team of in-house PhDs in AI, 10 of them to be precise, have developed a sophisticated clinical reasoning system. We call this the limbic layer, and it ensures safety, it ensures explainability, it ensures protocol adherence, it ensures compliance. We believe that the limbic layer is the key to unlocking generative AI for a patient-facing clinical context, and indeed it has been protected by 12 different patents. So, seeing is believing, let's take a look. This is the front door of care. You'll see in the middle is the patient experience. It's an empathetic, engaging chat system. On the left, you will see the limbic layer. It is systematically, behind the scenes, ticking off the necessary information in order to complete triage. Behind the scenes, a, a separate statistical machine learning model trained on hundreds of thousands of patients' data is predicting the most likely diagnosis. It then confirms this prediction through the administering of a routine outcome measure, which is recognizable by a clinician in the background. The system then disentangles primary and secondary diagnosis. It administers a validated risk assessment according to uh, best practice guidelines. And then another machine learning model predicts the severity of this particular case. It's going to combine this prediction with a knowledge base for the specific service we are working with to identify the optimal service line for this patient. And then it's going to go one step further, and it's actually going to book a session with a clinician within this service line right there and then. All that is going to get packaged for a clinician to review. It's going to be highly structured information, and it will look just as if another member of the care team 
has interviewed this individual and written up clinical notes, but it was all done by an AI. And the final point to make, in order to really drive service efficiencies, is that all this information is available within the electronic health record in the standard workflow for the clinician to really drive efficiencies. So beyond you know, the flashy demo and the, uh, the cool technology, why is this really important? Why should anyone care? Because at scale, in a healthcare context, we have demonstrated meaningful impact. Our AI improves access to care. A multi-site study published in Nature Medicine across 130,000 unique patients in the sample demonstrated a 15% increase in patients referring themselves into care when Limbic was at the front door. Patients also seem to really love this tool. RAI improves diversity, equity, and inclusion. In that same Nature paper, we showed proportionally greater access improvements for almost all minority demographics in hard-to-reach communities. Here we will show three, a 39% increase for Asian demographics, a 40% increase for black demographics, and a whopping 179% increase for non-binary demographics. This is the powerful equalizer in healthcare. And finally, and importantly, the holy grail, our AI is improving clinical outcomes. In a second multi-site study, this time across 65,000 patients, we saw that recovery rates were materially enhanced in the limbic group versus the control, and cost per recovery was substantially lower in a third multi-site study. So let's finish where we began. Five and a half thousand. That's the years of patient waiting time that limbic has already saved for patients in the United Kingdom. 25,000. That's the number of additional patients that have recovered due to limbic being used as part of their routine treatment. So everyone, healthcare AI is very much here today. It is driving material value for both patients and healthcare organizations. And I will leave with, um, with something that really gets me excited. It's the following question. How could things really look in a world where healthcare is truly abundant? And I encourage everybody in this room to think about that question on the way home, and please let me know what you come up with. Thanks very much. Super impressive um, that you got to 40% market penetration. What have you done differently in terms of your go-to-market that has enabled you to get to that kind of penetration? Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, I'm not sure I'll necessarily do it justice, but really it was about solving a problem for the organizations that had to make the procurement decision. Okay, it's not enough to just have clinical utility. We had to demonstrate that we were solving a pain point for the individuals within the trusts who would decide to use Limbic or not. And that pain point was capacity. They all had a intractable capacity issue. And what Limbic was able to demonstrate to get our foot in the door was that for every individual that access care through RAI, not only are we having a clinical impact, which is great, we're actually saving staff time, which is balancing the equation and is ensuring them to hit their KPIs as an organization with their contracts. Does that um, so you focused a lot here on the demo and what I would call basically onboarding. So effectively interviewing a patient, trying to, with a note taking and then sending mm. it ahead of time and then handling the booking. Mm. Um, is, is that the core or is there more that comes after that? I know obviously it's only a very short time to pitch, but is that the, the core magic is the sort of patient onboarding and getting them into the system? Or does it go on to aftercare as well? It goes on to aftercare. Uh, I would have loved to have shown you the entire solution. Unfortunately, the time just did not permit. Um, but at the beginning, you'll recall, I said after the initial diagnostic step, the system hands off to a generative AI care companion that supports patients throughout treatment. This is a mobile app which is delivering cognitive behavioral therapy through large language models powered by that proprietary clinical reasoning system we call the limbic layer. And that has also been published and demonstrated that patient engagement is enhanced, they're more likely to show up to their next therapy session, which is fantastic, they don't drop out as much. And secondly, most likely correlated, recovery rates are again materially improved. We published a paper just last week that showed that there was a 25% increase 
in patient recovery rate when using that in-treatment support tool that I didn't get a chance to show you today. Hi, thank you for that. Um, yeah, great pitch. A couple of questions from me. Um, one, maybe a quick one or not, does this move a problem? Because actually you're getting more people booked in a system that's overloaded. So I can totally see it's fixing it here, but yeah. does it move it somewhere else? Yeah. So this was the key thing to demonstrate during the initial pilot. Now, to, to your question, um, that first partner to do the case study with, critical for anybody who's thinking about doing something like this. But no, because while, yes, we are increasing access, for every referral, we are reducing the time it takes to complete the clinical assessment by the staff member. So there's an equation balancing effect where more people are entering the system, but we've saved hours of staff time for the efficiency driving. A similar thing is happening with that in-treatment support tool. So now there are more patients in treatment, but we're able to really help accelerate um, uh, patient recovery. So what we showed was the number of therapy sessions required to reach recovery went down for individuals using this AI. And therefore, they're kind of getting through treatment and getting to a good end faster, which allows the entire system to take more patients. But it's a fantastic question, because it's otherwise you just cause overburdening somewhere else. If I've got time for my last one, I'm going to. Uh, one of the people who pitched earlier uh, spoke about how they had avoided using generative AI in their mental health app, because sometimes it's unpredictable, sometimes it makes a recommendation you don't want. You know, we see even chat GPT, you ask it one question, you get a different answer uh, quite often. Um, how have you avoided that? Like, how can you absolutely yeah. guarantee it's going to do the right thing? Yeah. So, I mean, the first point to make is we have to lean in to generative AI. It's not just because it's in vogue. It solves a real problem, and that is engagement. So um, average retention after two weeks in mental health apps is 4%. That means one in 20 people are still using the app after two weeks. How can you have a therapeutic effect if no one's using the tool? So large language models, generative AI, solve for that problem. We see engagement went up 5x immediately within Limbic, according to the baseline. So that's why we're using this. Then the question becomes, how do you use it safely? The answer is the Limbic layer. That's that suite of clinical models trained on proprietary patient data, which that team of 10 PhDs spent five years building. And that ensures protocol compliance, and it means that you almost have a specialist AI system overseeing the generative AI system in real time. Nothing can come from the large language model and reach the patient without first passing through the limbic layer, which is why we call it a between the generative AI and the patient. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.